Kitwe, Kobabo province, is a town characterized by mining activities. Along with mining activities, criminal gangs. In the 1980s, a short and violent man would terrorize the people of Chamboli and Usakili townships of Kitwe. This is the story of Twigili. I know, I know guys, it's been it's been a really long time. Okay, not really a really long time, but like yeah. Um I'm back. I don't know if I'm consistently back, but I'm back. This is the video I wanted to to give you guys. This is the story I wanted to give you guys a while back, but unfortunately I couldn't. But I'm back now. If you're new here, my name is Kezia. Welcome to my channel. I'm a YouTuber based in Zambia, lifestyle and true crime content, premium stuff, if you ask me, so subscribe. And yeah, today's story, as you guys have heard from the intro, is about a Kitwe Komanja, a Komanda, a Jirabul in the 1980s, Kopala Komanda. Um, forgive me if I'm rusty telling this story because I'm just getting back in the groove of things, but I hope you enjoy. So, um, let's get into it. I feel like I'm forgetting to say something before I start the story, but let's get into it. So the plot of this story is in Kitwe, particularly Chambodi and Wusakiri townships of Kitwe, as I already mentioned. Um, so we are talking about Twigiri. So um, I don't know if throughout this video I'm going to be saying Twigiri, Twiggy. But I'm going to just say Twiggy, Twiggy, like English accent Twiggy, but well, I'll just say Twiggy or D, but Twiggy, which is probably what he was called, is a mouthful for the video. <laughs> so, pardon me. Alright, Twiggy was also known as Bone Burrows. Like always, I'm going to insert the picture, the, the names, just in case I'm mispronouncing them. But he was a very short, very violent man who lived with his grandmother. There's not much about his childhood, where he went to school, shanshani, shanshani. But basically, he had this AKA Bone Burrows and lived with his grandmother. It's not. It's also not clear at what age, the time he started this violence, or this gang. But yeah, he stayed with his grandmother until he decided to form his band, his gang of Jarabos, and then he left. Some of his gang members were Alexander. So when I read Alexander, I was like, Alexander, uh, ah, ah, Bemba, Alexander. So Alexander, Toronto, Bob, Shikalubula, Shikalubula, Jack Zindo, Filembo, and Kasafa. So those were some of his members. I'm sure there was more because it was just a whole thing. But those are some of the members mentioned. Chegili was said to be inspired. I feel like everyone that was a mafia, a problem in the military, a policeman was inspired by this movie when it came out. Still Vesa Salon in Rumble. So he wore military type denim and then a, a headband with an American flag on it because he was inspired by Sylvester Stallone's character Rambo. So as you can already tell, he was motivated by this character as well as other gangster or other wars that old Hollywood gangster movies. So that's where he got his style, his way of moving. Maybe that's why he got the idea to form the band as well, who knows. So as it was in... There was a rumor that he actually did use charms in his violent career and that to revive the charms as instructions from his witch doctor or from his medicine man, he used to rape his grandmother to revive them. Not sure how true that is, but that was part of this. Not sure how true that is, but that's part of the story. So it is said that every time he had to revive his charms and to exert power over people, he used to go back home to rape his grandmother. A story of one of his raids was in the morning, Chigidi and his band decided to go and raid a local market where it was just like okay so it was women being attacked so it was just women and children selling and then he he and his band would go to the market with their weapon of choice or their cheapest weapon which is knives and they brandy brandished those knives to the people and they made the people give them um their dried fish their dried carpenter and any other food stuffs they had the onions the tomatoes the veggies and all that stuff Dried fish is expensive, so I know those women were hurt. So after they took those foods, 
they would go into the bush because they it's it's in the stories it's very clear that they lived somewhere in the bushes where no one can find their house no one can trust them or whatever so after they made the people the the women surrender all their stock or their goods they would go and retreat in the bush make a huge feast and then come back to a local bar where they would brandish their knives again and make sure the attendants in the bar or in the taverns would give them alcohol so they would make their attendants in the taverns surrender their chibuku their katata their lutuku and all that stuff and then they would also they would go back to the bushes again where they would finish their feast they would also not just attack attendants but also if you are found drinking they would just tell you to surrender your beer and then move on with their lives also if they took your beer and you protested they asked why you would be beaten that was the uh, that was the order of the day you don't question them you don't put up a fight against them you don't go against them in any way all you have to do is give them what they wanted and keep it pushing so the years 19 1986 there are food riots in Kitwe because the Zambian economy is now failing the president at the time the government of the day failed to implement um, the IMF saps so now the kwacha is dwindling the economy is failing and there are food riots in Kitwe. it is said that Twigini and the band actively participated in those food riots until um, so the government released the soldiers from their their holding Mushidi barracks and then told them to go to Kitwe to keep order. And that is when Twigili and his band of men left Usakili and Chambodi and went into hiding to avoid the military. Because obviously the military has more power. Once they catch you, yeah, yeah. You have no power against them. So that is what happened. So I guess for a time it was peaceful. I, get, I wonder, no, I actually do wonder if it was peaceful because it was like, if you don't move correctly with soldiers as well, it's just problematic. But I wonder which ones the people, I guess they preferred the, the soldiers because at least no one was stealing their food. And, you know, they were not living in terror as much when this, the army was there. But it was a peaceful time until the army left after the food riots were over. The army left. After they left, Trigidi and his his gang would come back to Kitwe, Chamboli, and Usaki. Right. So in mining towns of old, miners were not paid through banks. They were paid in cash through mining pay points. They were paid through mining pay points, and these pay points were mined by police. In Usakili and Chamboli, Trigidi ran the place. He was like the boss. He was was the power so he knew so miners would get paid on a day on the first pawan popularly known as pawan that kind of vibe that's why it originated from it's the mining mining culture so pawan uh, businessmen traders Congolese, Amakore Kore, Amazazulu would go to, would know that, okay, today is payday, and then they would spread, and they would spread their, their merchandise near the pay points because they knew the miners were paid. They would spread their merchandise near the pay points so that the miners would buy. Alongside those people, the Salaula people, were also, um, Abakaloba creditors they're also ready to pounce on miners for on on for on their de on the debt that they owed them because miners have this habit but let's not get into it so um yeah so they're ready you know who else was ready Pawano, twiggily and his gang so the culture was every time Pawan, when miners would line up at the pay point to get paid, even though the fact, even even though those places were man were manned by mine police, they would be near there, and then they would spread shtenge cloths or sack bags and then pile stones on them. You, as a miner, were expected to buy the, uh, mind you just basic stones mere stones not stones for building those ones we buy like in kitwe near shan kitwe trades those women that sell those such stones no basic basic stones pile them put them up for sale they would even have price tags and then twiggily would expect you as a miner who just got your coins to buy those stones so a miner coming from the pay point with his money would pass by out of fear by the stone you're expected to carry the stone until you're out of sight if you are seen throwing the stone you get beaten up 
So it was a diplomatic way of robbing them because you can't even report to the police that you were robbed because you voluntarily gave them your money, you know? So it was just a very smart way of robbing people. C can you imagine that? Can you imagine getting your money, getting your coins, and then this one thug is expecting you to give him your money? That was, those are tough times. I don't, I don't even know how you could escape, escape it because once they know you're a minor, you, they know you, need, you have money on the first, on the second, on the third. They expect money out of you. You have to give them money. And it's, not, it's, not really, it's not trade. It's giving them money. Diplomatic way of theft. So that was, that's what used to happen. After you give them, you give them your money because giving them your money. The next day, Tugili and his gang would have new military denim, new headbands, everything. Would go to the taverns, splurge. Sometimes not splurge, would just drink for free because they are thugs. They run the place. They are the men that run the place. They'll just be there, chilling, brandishing new clothes, rocking new stuff. You know, fitness. Fitness. So that's what they would do. And you know they stole it was it Pawan was like also their payday. You know, they were shareholders in the miners' coins. Another major recorded incident is so ZCM decided they wanted to reward their workers. So they decided to give them customized watches. The rumors are it was they were Rolex watches. Customized because each watch had the name of, of the miner printed on it. So it was like a token of appreciation, shiny. When Twiggy Lee and his band found out that that was what was happening, they wanted they wanted rewards from ZTM as well for their lack of service. I don't know. For disciplining the miners, I do not know, but they wanted shares as well. So uh, uh, with that, with those watches, the watches were also given to them per one. Oh, no, actually, they were, I don't know if they were given to them per one or it was sooner, but then it was closer to payday. So on payday, Miners go to the pay point as usual to get their money. What did Twiggy and the band do? Spread as usual, but this time they didn't even spread uh, chitenges and sackcloths as usual. Some with stones, some with no stones. It was a clear message that they wanted what the miners had. So if you had a watch, carefully lay it on the, on the chitenge and keep it pushing. Careful date on Stenge and keep what you if you wore your watch that day. I'm sure there was a miner somewhere whose wife said, Leave that watch or don't go get your money today. And he was just like, No, I'm going and he went. And the wife back home was just like, I told you. So I just know that day there was at least one. But anyway, so lay your watch, give it to them. If you didn't have a watch, if you are not appreciated by, give, by being given a watch, you're expected to buy a stone and keep it pushing. I would much rather buy a stone. I would much rather buy a stone than give a thug my hard end Rolex. Do you know how a Rolex from ZCM? I'd rather buy a stone. So that that's, that is what happened. Now the downfall of Twiggy came when he raped a woman. Of course, like it was a it was a woman that triggered the downfall of this little short Napoleon complex man. It was a woman. So. He raped a pregnant woman and then after raping her, ripped her belly open with a knife to check the sex of the baby. I know I don't know if the woman died or not. She probably did because he probably he's a thug. He raped her and cut her belly open. Probably didn't take her to the hospital. So probably she probably died and the and the baby died. Which is a very sad thing. Um yeah. So when this happened, the wives of the miners, the women in the community staged a protest at Kana West Central Police Station. At the Central Police Station, the women staged a protest, and that was when police acted. Police acted the women. Oh, of course, it took women. It took women. The the men didn't have the didn't have the guts. It took women to have guts to report this man so that he he, he has the downfall. Kudos to those women. So they staged a protest and a manhunt was formed by the police for Twiggy Day. Upon hearing that there was a manhunt set up for him, fled to the bushes, fled to the bushes, but the police didn't stop because I'm sure the women also didn't stop. They were relentless in their protests because now he had shifted his attention from men to women. I'm sure he was already raping women anyway, but I feel like to that extent why he had to rape a pregnant woman, cut out the womb, 
stick out a child just to check the sex. I just feel like that was too extreme. So I feel like the women were so relentless in their protest. So that was that was the fine. That was the last straw for them. Like steal from our husbands. Don't mess with our kids. That kind of vibe. That was the vibe I got. Anyway, so they set a manhunt for him, and then later. And then later, he was spotted at the tavern drinking with his friends. And then people, slick people, made uh, reported to Mindolo police that they had seen him. So when they reported, the police were fast into moving and moving into actions, moving into action. And then when they confronted Trigidi in a false show of bravery because he, he he thought he was so pompous, he charged at the policeman with a knife just kind of like one of the Milani brothers who charged the police with a knife and he was shot by another Rambo that's what I'm saying at that time I feel like every man that was in like a pol police army or just a thief was motivated by Rambo so he was called the mother policeman aka was Rambo and he was shot using a northern Rhodesian rifle also known as Ichiduri and he died on the spot so folks that was the story and downfall of Kitwe Gangster, Kitwe Mafia, Kitwe Jerabo, Kitwe Commander Twigidi. Um, what stood out to me about the story is the fact that um, the gangster culture is like it, it goes all the way back. Like it's it's not new, it goes all the way back. It's probably it was probably someone before Twigidi because even Twigidi's time. It wasn't just Twiggy's gang operating in Usakili and uh, Usakili and Chamboli. It was multiple other gangs, but they had their territories. They had there was a C3, C5, Twiggy's gang. There were many other gangs that were operating, and they had their territories. The taverns where they drank, the markets where they store, the sections where they, that kind of thing. So it just made me realize that the, the gangster culture goes all the way back. It goes by. It's not new. So folks, that's the story of Trigidi. I hope it's not too long. I hope it's not too short. But that was the information I was able to find. Charles is that I'll link my references in the description box if you need to read it, the story. I hope next time I come back to you guys with another story. Hopefully this time a history case because I have I have the topic in mind. But I just need to research and read. So that was me. Thank you for watching Wicked Wednesday. Oh, something I forgot to say. I'm launching a podcast version of Wicked Wednesday. So if you're listening to me on the podcast, hi, 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 hi. Welcome to something new. This is very much an experiment. I don't know how it will go, but hopefully you guys enjoy the podcast version because I just thought maybe you'd like to listen to it while you're doing something and would like to log off of YouTube. So welcome to Wicked Wednesday, the podcast, if you're listening to me on Anchor. Uh, hope you guys enjoy. I'll talk to you guys next time. If you're here for lifestyle content, see you guys on saturday you know we always have a video for saturday and wicked wednesday see you guys the next day of the week um all right so see you guys next time bye